Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You're tuned in to another episode of the Image TV Podcast. That's right. This is a re-entry show. For those of you joining us on 98.3 The Vibe, special edition, 9 a.m. in the morning, we want to thank you for tuning in. We want to welcome you to another fine episode, episode three. We've got Ken Silver here to my right. The outside sponsor for the Image program as it originated. This man actually helped found and start the program with me. Ken, it is a pleasure to have you back with us. Oh, I'm glad I could be here. This is exciting. I want to be a part of it. Take awesome. it away. And <laughs> let's start this thing going. Okay, well, let's just kind of recap what we talked about last week in episode two. Uh, we had a couple of guys on the show. We had, well, actually, uh, we had three guys. We had uh, Pastor Bell, Pastor Ben Bell was with us. We also had Ralph Hall, and then we had Bert Knapp. Now, Ralph Hall and Bert Knapp were former inmates as uh, Pastor Bell has been a role model in the community. And so, uh, kind of recap, and we talked about prison as it relates to reentry and the help uh, that you need to find uh, while you're incarcerated. And some of the help that's available. Bert was able to talk about how there's a lot of resources that are available actually inside the prison. Well, not a lot, but there's some that are not being taken advantage of. That's unfortunate. You know, uh, we do have programs available. We don't have the same programs in every institution. Uh, you may have different programs in Newton that you have in Fort Madison or in uh, Fort Dodge, uh, but there are programs available. Uh, unfortunately, there's a waiting list for most of them. Yes, there is. And I'll tell you, there's a, po a political game even inside the institution when it comes to uh, some of these different programs and signing up for them and being aware and feeling like you're actually uh, needed and wanted into these programs. So it's just like it works out here. Well, I can understand uh, You know, some of the guys that have got a longer time before release. They may not be in a hurry to learn anything new but uh, talk explain a little bit more what you said this political programs tell me about that well I mean a lot of times when you see things in prison that are posted up programs per se okay. these programs uh, most of the popular guys or the guys that are, are involved with uh, a lot of the resources are going to be the first ones to sign up. They're going to go tell their buddies. They're going to go tell their buddies. You know, normally a guy just walking by who's maybe uh, been in prison a few months, looks it up on the board and maybe sees a flyer posted, he's not going to think so much about how this could actually benefit him, uh, the different benefits that apply to this, uh, the, the waiting list and, and whatnot. So you find that most of the guys that are taking advantage of these things are the ones that have been in a long time they're looking to get out and really change their lives uh, they, they're, they're looking to kind of gravi gravitate toward more education things like that well it's just like anything else you've got to have the initiative to improve and change before anything will happen and that, that's right but you know one of the things I think we need to take a look at every prison has counselors that and is correct you know, and that was a huge, uh, that's actually a huge issue. And that's one of the things that Bert brought up was the fact that uh, I think he said that there was, uh, the statistically speaking, one inmate, or, or excuse me, one counselor per every hundred inmates. That's ridiculous. Well, just do a little math. Okay, you can remember how to do that. Oh, yeah. I, I, I remember from the experience of living it. <laughs> 20 days in a month. You know, 100 inmates, that's five, five inmates a day if you see them once a month. And maybe 30 minutes a time. You know, that's not long to encourage somebody and help them plan their future and, and lay out a real plan of attack uh, to get ready for release. No, it's not, Ken. And I'll tell you, uh, you know, the fact that if you think of a counselor, and me and you have spoke about this, uh, you, you look at a counselor's duties, okay? They're supposed to build some type of a relationship with their client or the inmate uh, in this case because they're giving rec recommendations that are serious, that are crucial. Sure. I mean, do you know what it's like to, or could you imagine what it would be like to have 
your hands in the life of a counselor that barely knows anything about you? Whether you get parole or not, <laughs> how long you're going to stay there, and and uh, you know you have to wear a name badge to, so they know oh, who you man. are. I'll tell you, I will never forget those days. It was actually living hell, misery every day, waking up like Groundhog Day. You know, you think. You, you, I remember <clears throat> one time I closed my eyes and I was opening it and trying to blink it and open it back up. I was hoping that this was a dream and I could snap up out of it, <laughs> but it wasn't. <laughs> well, I think what we've really learned is there are programs available inside the prison. They may be difficult to get into. Yes. Not everybody avails themselves uh, to that opportunity. And, uh, you know, the we all think we need uh, more counselors that can help us. And I think, uh, you know, after that, after Bert talked to us, then we were able to start looking at some of the things that are available outside after we do leave. Bingo! And boy, were we lucky last week when we had Pastor Bell on here. <laughs> yes, we was. That guy's got so many programs going. And, <laughs> and at the ground level, you know, he's Gratz Roots. Uh, he he does what needs to be done. Uh, some of the programs well, he's got, me, fatherhood. The fatherhood. But I'll tell you, another good thing about Pastor Bell that I like is he's not afraid to get into the trenches, you oh, know? Man, no. I mean, he well, he's a Marine. He <laughs> likes being in the trenches. <laughs> he gets deep down into this inner city and, and looks at the problems and guys that don't have money, and he can relate, you oh, know? Yeah. Guys need a, a YMCA pass. Uh, guys needing help getting into a program, needing to introduce uh, or meet someone who, who works in this position. I mean, he's a great networker, so yeah, I, I agree. Oh, man, you know, look at these fatherhood classes. How much benefit those are to people. He can uh, even provide you with classes that help you get your child support reduced. Uh, he's got motherhood classes on... Uh, some of these women have been separated from their children for a long time. They need to be reinduced, reduced, introduced, reintroduced. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to how to take care of their children. There's a fresh start program. Yes. For women just coming out of prison, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, women have the same problem readjusting uh, to the outside life as the men do. That is correct. And uh, so. You know, Pastor's got these things going at the Grub YMCA here in Des Moines. He's got things going in Ottumwa. He's got things going in Mason City. He's got a housing program available. And these are decent houses. These are not flop houses uh, with all the rats and cockroaches running around. These are nice places to live. And That's guys, right. And, you know, for, for those of you who are joining us now on 98.3 The Vibe, special edition, Sunday morning, we want to thank you for tuning in Uh for those of you joining in uh, by YouTube and other social media, we want to encourage you, if you like what you are listening to, if you like what you are seeing, we're going to ask that you please subscribe through YouTube. And we would like to see these numbers continue to flourish all over America. This is very, very vital, very important information. Uh, as we are established here in Des Moines, Iowa, uh, we talk about reentry. We talk about the image program and solutions uh, to problems. And so uh, we are going to continue to keep bringing you this live every week. And so we just want to make sure that you understand, please, how important it is to subscribe through YouTube so that we can see the results. And after that commercial. <laughs> okay, that wasn't a commercial. But <laughs> it sounded well, like one. well. Uh, you know, we did. Uh, I want to. I want to talk a little bit about Ralph Hall. Okay. The All other, right. The other guy that was here last week. Yeah. Uh, been out for 25 years. Yes. And uh, he mentioned that things are so much easier now than they were then. Yes. Uh, and the main thing that he said he was lacking, which we think we've got uh, changed by now, is the support system. And that goes back to some of the benefits that uh, Pastor Bell has got. That comes back to some of the NAAA type of programs we've got, and also comes back to some of the things we're going to talk about right after our next break. That's right. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to let you know that speaking of reentry, 
Uh, coming up after the break, I am going to break down the number one, the number one program in the state of Iowa, and that is the Evelyn K. Davis Center for Working Families. I believe that this is one of the potentially one of the best one-stop shops in all America. Uh, the Evelyn K. Davis Center for Working Families is one of Des Moines' biggest kept secrets with all the programming, with all the education, with all the opportunity that it offers right here in Des Moines. I believe that there are not enough people taking advantage of it. And we're going to go to a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to talk about the Evelyn K. Davis Center for Working Families and all that it has to offer. We'll be back on the Image Show 98.3 The Vibe Special Edition after these messages. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, on the Image TV Podcast. We want to thank you for tuning in on 98.3 The Vibe Special Edition, Sunday morning. Before the break, we talked about one of Des Moines' biggest kept secrets. And that is the Evelyn K. Davis Center for Working Families. That's right. We call this one of Des Moines' biggest kept secrets. Why? Because with all this opportunity, with all these programs, with all this education, uh, there is so much there that a person actually has not had the time or has not taken the time to really wrap themselves around everything that it has to offer. Well, let's get it out in the open. Let's quit making it a secret. Where is it? Well, first of all, the Evelyn K. Davis Center is at 1171 7th Street, Des Moines, Iowa. For those of you who are not aware, the telephone number is 515-697-7700. And you can also go to the website uh, at evelynkdaviscenter.org. And so, but I want to talk a little bit about the core values and the core services. Okay, there's re-entry services. Okay, there's a DMAC youth build service. There's a summer youth experience camp. I mean, there's so much there right there, I mean, that I could st actually stop right there, and that would be enough. But let's continue to go on down the line. You have income and work support, benefit screening, job development, and this is really crucial right now, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you that are out there, you have uh, relatives, you have kids, you may be looking for a job for employment, the Evelyn K. Davis Center has been very, very helpful in the Des Moines community with the referrals of the different job companies. Uh, there are coaches that work with employers one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, they talk to them, they have a relationship built with these employers so that they can get out and, and get clients jobs and get them employed immediately. Uh, we talk about men on the move. Uh, that's my area where I work. And right now because of uh, the uh, COVID, you know, men on the move is, is not actually in service right now. What is men with the move? Men, men on the what move? is men on the move? That's the clothing closet that we oh, have. Okay. Yeah, okay. and so if you're looking for uh, clothes, you wanna you wanna start a job, you've you've got an interview, or uh, you have some kind of a job uh, lined up, we make sure that we provide clothing for, for the interviews. And I'm not talking about regular clothes, I'm talking about nice suits. Uh, oftentimes these suits come from companies have never been worn before uh, fresh out of the cleaners you know it may be from someone who has passed away all different types of things go into uh, the clothes that are donated but they're very very nice quality clothes and then we have uh, partnering for success now that's a partnership with trained mentors offering support and then <clears throat> this is another huge part of the Evelyn K. Davis Center for Working Families is the Financial Empowerment Center. Boy, you know, it's interesting you say that because 
When we interview people and say, what were your biggest problems when you got out? Yes. They never mentioned that. They mentioned, my biggest problem was finding a job. My biggest problem was transportation. My biggest problem was finding a place. To... They very seldom mention that, and yet that's one of the things that's going to hit them right in the head Oh yes. shortly that... after they get out. So I'm glad you've got something to uh, offer in that area. Yeah, they've got even got financial coaches. I mean, that can work with you. They can help you set up a bank account. They can tell you. Uh, they can pull your credit uh, and, and, and pull a soft pull, so it doesn't affect your credit. I mean, they have uh, boot camps that are available. Nonprofit boot camps, for profit boot camps. They teach you how to get a, a business actually established and running from scratch off the ground for those who have maybe been in business for six months how to fine-tune and improve uh, your business I mean there is so many valuable obstacles that come with the Evelyn K Davis Center for Working Families that no one can literally wrap their whole mind around all of it to take advantage of it and that's what's going on and that's for anybody in the community that's and not just that's for anybody religion. in the community these programs are absolutely free Okay. And they even give grants away uh, for small grants after you've, uh, they help you with a logo. They give you uh, small grants to start your business. I mean, this is reality and this is stuff that you don't see many people taking advantage of. Oh, that's good to know that's there, that's for sure. Yeah, and uh, to actually get involved, I invite you all to call the Evelyn K. Davis Center for Working Families. 515-697-7700. All right. Thanks a lot. That's good to know. <laughs> yes. Well, I think it's time we take another break, isn't it? No, we don't need to take a break already. You don't already. want to take a break? No, we're no. having a fun time. Tell man. me let's more. Talk, <laughs> let's, let's talk more about this reentry. Hey, I want to talk just a little bit. We're, now, we're talking about uh, programs in Des Moines. I've talked about the Evelyn K. Davis Center for Working Families. We've also got Urban Dreams, yeah. and, and then we've got uh, Creative Visions. You know, I don't really have the core services of these other uh, programs uh, to be able to get too far in depth, but I do know the directors. Uh, I know Akeo, very nice guy, and I also know uh, the guy, the director at... Wayne Cre Ford? No, it's not Wayne Ford. <laughs> That's old news. <laughs> Well, you're an old guy. You haven't been with it very long. I'm just trying to bring you up to speed. Yeah, no, it's not Wayne Ford. Uh, I, I've got his name at the top of my tongue. He actually used to work for the Evelyn K. Davis Center for Working Families. Okay. Uh, I told you you should have taken Isaac, a break. Your Isaac, mind's going bad. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let me tell you. So, as we talk about reentry, Ken, what do you think? is one of the biggest barriers that an inmate coming out of prison faces. I think the biggest barrier, I think, is that he's not prepared. Why? Well, number one, we probably didn't have enough counselors to encourage them to do the training that's available, to do the networking that's available, to get the resume ready. You know, Pastor Bell is a big advocate of setting goals. And his suggestion was that we make goal setting and a plan to uh, attain those goals as a condition for parole. Mm -hmm. And I'm a firm believer that if more people could put down their goals on paper and the plan to accomplish those goals before they get out, we would really improve their chances of success. And again, we come back around to the lack of counseling they're going to need good counselors to encourage them and help them to put that plan together. Well, let's look at geographical location, okay. okay? Let's look at Iowa, the state of Iowa. Your average, let's just say African American coming out of prison probably doesn't have the same business mindset uh, to start a business that would include Iowa being a supportive help to that. What I mean is <clears throat> most African-American men or women 
they don't want to get into farming. They don't want to get into uh, agriculture. They don't want to get into uh, plumbing and, and different things like that. Would you say or would you agree that Iowa is limited toward resources for the African American culture as far as business business making and support? I mean, you know, most African Americans would probably want to get into some type of entertainment field. Uh, they want to be another Bobby Pate? What is this? <laughs> well, they might. They might. Uh, they might want to start um, a sports league or uh, anything that involves entertainment and they don't necessarily have the support. They might want to get into TV. They might want to get into acting, you know. And yeah, but, I mean, where does a white person get that support? Well, uh, let's, yeah. I mean, that's tough. That's a tough field to get into any time. It's I, I any agree. type of, of uh, entertainment business. I agree. Uh, so, uh, I think if you back up and say what resources are available in Iowa, mm -hmm. they're more geared towards agriculture, insurance, and in, in support of those industries. Okay, it doesn't matter whether you're black or white or whatever. Sure. That's what Iowa is. Right. If you want to get into the entertainment business, maybe you go to uh, California, maybe you go to Las Vegas, New York City. I don't know. Uh, but I'm not sure it matters about your race. No, it Everybody's doesn't. Everybody's got it, it, the same uh, problem. Uh, you know, it's just like if you want to go to school to be a veterinarian, mm -hmm. you go to Iowa State. You don't go to Iowa University or University of Iowa. Sure. If well, you want to go to medical the, school, maybe it's the opposite. So, And the reason why I made that point was uh, using the African-American term is because when I was in prison, I know that a lot of people coming out, they most of uh, their visions in business was had something to do with rapping or the hip-hop uh, R&B rap entertainment field. And the first thing that I would have to tell them is that the there's really no industry here in in Des Moines, uh, in Iowa, for that matter. No, that's true, and it's like I'm saying: if you want to get into that kind of thing, you go where it is. You know, right? Uh, when I first started out in life, I worked for a big construction company, and I found out if I wanted to make a living, I had to go where the work was. That's right. I'd go out to Pennsylvania where they were building Interstate 80. I'd go out to Washington where they were building a dam or wherever and I think that's the same with anything uh, you've got to go where that industry is if you want any kind of support and any kind of chance of getting into it so um, you know I don't know what to tell you uh, <laughs> I think, I think <laughs> you've got to look at realistic goals sure uh, for the environment that you're in yeah and, and if definitely. your goals don't match the environment you probably got to change either one or the other, the goal or the environment. I would agree. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to a quick commercial. We want to thank you for joining us on the Image TV podcast and 98.3 The Vibe Sunday morning special edition. We'll be back after these messages. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, on the Image TV podcast, 98.3 The Vibe Sunday morning special edition. And we are talking reentry. Ken Silver. Well, when we talked to people that had uh, just come out of prison and were involved with reentry, we asked them, what are your main uh, problems in a successful reentry? And they listed quite a few of those. So we did a little research and we tried to put a list together showing all the resources in one place. Now most of these resources uh, are on the internet, so you're going to need a computer, but Computers are available in all the libraries. Computers are available down at the Elvin K. Davis Center, which is about 7th and University. So you shouldn't have a problem being able to access those. I'm going to start out with jobs. You know, most people coming out, the first thing they want to find is a job. Well, there are several places to look. Craigslist is not a bad place to look for jobs. Uh, you can get that on uh, craigslist.com. And if you want to uh, go ahead and narrow it down, you can eventually come to Iowa and then you get to Des Moines and uh, decide what type of job you're looking for. If you've got any type of training for 
transportation or welding or uh, warehousing and so on. Iowa for workforce development is another good source and again you get that on the internet and that's iowaworkforcedevelopment.gov. Uh, boy, the labor unions or, or, or trade unions are a great place to go apply for jobs. Oh yeah. Right here we've got a list of the laborers union. Uh, that's 265-2558. There's another one that's 265-6131. Uh, and you go down there to the hall and you sign up and uh, they'll send you out and put you to work. Uh, some of the trade unions have apprenticeship programs, and I'm telling you, those are fantastic. Uh, the Plumbers and Steamfitters Union, uh, got a couple numbers here. One of them is 319 area code, and that's uh, 3650413. And then the local one in Des Moines is 515-243-3244. We've also got the Carpenters Union, uh, that's 265-3467, and uh, there's another Carpenters Union listed in the area code 712, and that's 255-1567. So take advantage of these. Again, I encourage you to investigate the apprenticeship programs where you go to classes on Saturdays and the uh, and while you're working, you get paid, and every year you get an increase in pay, depending on how many years uh, you've completed your apprenticeship program. And after four years, if you've successfully done it, you're a journeyman and you make uh, some pretty good wages. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the uh, Electricians Union here in Des Moines is 243-1924. The Operating Engineers, man, that's a good thing to get into. That's kind of a fun job. Uh, Operating <clears throat> Engineers. Oh yeah, you get to go out there and run all that big heavy equipment and the cranes and the dozers and the graders and they pay pretty good too, don't they? Oh Starting yeah, off, yeah. yeah. Uh, two six five sixteen fifty seven, and then uh, the roofers union. We've got something up there. Uh, you can look at the uh, phone numbers for that. And again, we come up with the Evelyn K. Davis Center. Uh, that'll help with jobs also. And the, that's, now wait a minute, when you say the Evelyn K. Davis Center, you got to put some bass in your voice, Ken. I mean, it's got to be the Evelyn K. Davis Center for Working Families. Iowa's number one, or no, no, Capital City's number one one-stop shop in all America. <laughs> Where's that? <laughs> all right, we're going to move on. The next thing, uh, you know, a big problem for anybody coming out is transportation. Uh, first of all, you don't have a vehicle, you don't have a driver's license. So the only way to get around is, uh, at least in Des Moines, is to go down and get a DART bus pass. And uh, yeah. you, you can get on the internet, that's www.ridedart.com slash fare slash reduced fare program. So make sure you get on that. Uh, just fill out a form. Uh, unfortunately, it takes a week or two to get your pass, but uh, I think it's like 18 or $20 a month you pay for a pass and you're unlimited riding all over the city. There's also a program to help you with your driver's license reinstatement, and uh, you can set up a program to start paying off your fines, and they'll give you a, a temporary license that you can go ahead and, and start driving, and that's at apps. Dot Polk County, Iowa, dot gov dash dot LRP, License Reinstatement Program. <clears throat> then we talk about housing. Uh, rent vouchers are available uh, through the DHS program, and that's apps dot Polk County, Iowa, dot gov slash CRM. Uh, then we talked about Dads with a Purpose. They've got a uh, housing program available also, and that's dwpdm at gmail dot com. And, and you know they are; <clears throat> they also have dads with a purpose offered at the Evelyn K. Davis Center. Okay. Uh, they have the, the fatherhood, or excuse me, dads with a purpose, and the motherhood uh, program as well. Right. And where was that? Uh, at the Evelyn K. Davis Center for Working Families. Oh, oh okay. America's. Number one, number one, one stop, one stop yeah. shop in all America. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, there are a couple shelters available if uh, you're really in a bind and you can't uh, get anything else. The host ministry shelter is at 1310 Sixth Avenue, and uh, that's a pretty decent place. Uh, Central Iowa Shelter Service is more downtown, uh, 1420 Mulberry, kind of on the southwest part of the loop. Uh, but both of those are places you can go uh, if nothing else. Food, your EBT, you can get that at the DHS website again on the internet, and that's called secureapp.dhs.stopstate.iowa.us. Keep going. Hey, now, I see this St. Vincent de Paul there at 1426 6th Avenue, Des Moines, Iowa. I want to uh, make a specific announcement on this because there's some very helpful information that uh, St. Paul, St. Vincent de Paul offers beds for those who are under the employment rate, for those who don't make much money. I don't know what the cutoff is, but it's it's very, very reasonable. Uh, there are beds, brand new beds, that you can go through uh, General Relief, and St. Vincent de Paul will actually issue you the beds once you get the voucher. And I think that they'll give you a bed every 10 years, every 8 years or so. But that's where I got my bed from, and I, I got a very nice bed, and it was free. I couldn't believe it. And I think it was you who told me about that. Well, the reason they give them to you every eight or ten years is if you outgrow them. <laughs> All right. Uh, another good uh, source besides St. Vincent de Paul for food is the Food Bank of Iowa, of course, and that's out on East 17th Street, and their phone number is 564-0330. All this information is going to be available on our website, and it'll be uh, posted on the uh podcast later on so if you miss it while I'm talking why don't worry about it I just want you to know it's there uh, same way with clothing we've got uh, St. Vincent de Paul for clothing we've got Evelyn K. Davis for clothing and uh, Hope Ministries has an encore store out on uh, Army Post Road and also Merle Hay Road and I'll tell you they've got some really nice clothes out there I've taken people out there and and buy set, uh, six or seven sets of clothes, uh, including shoes, for maybe 25 or $30. N nice stuff. I mean, it's better than what I've got in my closet. But anyway. I, d I doubt that, Ken. I doubt that. You've been in my closet. No, you? but I see what you wear. Okay. <laughs> hey, you never made Anyway. Me. You see my shirt? <laughs> you know what this is? What is it? That's... Some language in Africa is, is motorcycle. Oh, okay. A friend of mine, Mike Haley, rode his motorcycle across Africa to raise money for an orphanage over there, and he had these shirts made up to, to uh, help raise the funds. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, that is anyway, you never pay attention to the way I dress. My feelings are hurt. But anyway, <clears throat> moving on. Well, I'll tell you, moving on, ladies and gentlemen, I want to, first of all, Thank you all for tuning in. This has been a wonderful morning with you, Ken, and, and, and on this uh, <clears throat> podcast. And we've unraveled so much information that I think for those of you out there listening, I hope that you had an ink pen. For those of you out there who are viewed, viewed in, tuned in, listening in, uh, I hope that you had your uh, some time to write down some of this stuff, take advantage of some of this information. When we come back next week, we're going to speak... We're actually going to get very in-depth. We're going to start to unveil the investigation of our criminal justice. We're going to talk about criminal justice. And, I mean, this is for everybody. This isn't just for uh, guys coming out of prison, gals coming out of prison. Uh, this is for everyone. You know, we talk about the justice system. and We talk about uh, the injustice and how it was formed what does justice mean to you? What does justice mean uh, according to reentry? What does justice in generally mean? We're going to talk about it on our next episode. For all of you tuned in, we want to say good night and <coughs> what was the I'm name of that place? What was the name of that place where you work again? <laughs> Evelyn what? For those of you tuned in, we want to say thank you so much. 
Uh, we want to invite you back on the show, and we want to ask if you want to show your support. We would ask that you subscribe to YouTube. We would ask that you get involved with the image movement. You can contact me, Robert Pate, at rpate.image at gmail.com. And we will talk more. If you have questions, if you want to be on the show, if you would like to meet Mr. Ken Silver, please reach out to the Image TV Podcast, 98.3 The Vibe Special Edition. It's a wrap.